Will you please welcome Mr. Jack D? <laughs> Nice to see Jack back on the show. You've been on, uh, I think, uh, more, more than any other guest. You've been on like every other series we've had. Jack. I have. I think this is the seventh time. Wow. Someone said, well, yeah. Well, well, congratulations. Let's see if we can get it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just ask me the right questions. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, you're looking good. Uh, were you comfortable back there? Because that is a, a somewhat testosterone. The, oh, the testosterone is dripping off the walls in that room. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, but, and then Daniel and Russell walked in. It went up a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of women very excited tonight. Are they? To how, be here, yeah. How, how do you know? How can you tell? You're not the sort of person who can see that sort of thing. No, you, you, can, you, you can feel it in the air, yeah? as Phil Collins would say. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a big Phil Collins fan? No, no. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're out of the room then, because now you can relax, because let's face it, I'm no threat, because we're about the same age and we're about the same... You know, obviously I'm more attractive than you, but we're, we're similar sort of fellows, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, we don't have to compete with those. They're, we can't compete with approach, them. I can't, I know. I just, uh, you know, these, these people... It's a different generation. They're the new ones coming through, aren't they? You know? I mean, it is. It's it, it's over for the likes of us. We've had our best years. Jesus Christ. I mean, at least, well, at least for me, I can be funnier and funnier the older I get because I've got a grumpy face. You just look more past it. <laughs> <laughs> so, don't, don't clap that. You'll miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lead Balloon is uh, back on our screens, and congratulations, because uh, this is sort of new territory for you in a way. I know you've done a, a series previously, but mm. it was quite a bold step to go from stand-up to scripted comedy mm. that you're writing yourself, and, to, and something which is obviously kind of coming from you quite personally. Yeah, I, I, I love doing it, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a great, a great sort of learning curve as we do it. I, I write it with, uh, with Pete Sinclair, who I think you know. And uh, we just have a lot of fun doing it. We get together and, and have a laugh about it. Right, now, it, was, yeah. it started on BBC Four, uh, <coughs> was deemed a critical success, was moved to a channel where it had more chance of getting an audience, BBC Two. For those who might still not have actually caught it yet, though, uh, how would you explain the premise? Because it's, it's not about you as such, but you might think a casual observer would think it was your life. Uh, yeah, uh, he's, he's, he's a slightly, uh, slightly rubbish comedian. And... Um... <laughs> just be very careful. <laughs> where you laugh when I'm explaining this. And um, he's just found himself in that point in his life where there's been a bit of a hiatus in the excitement of a career yeah. and it's not really... Uh, nothing's moving forward for him anymore, you know? <laughs> and uh, he's a terrible liar and uh, he goes through life uh, leading a kind of fantasy, really. But, you know... From my experience of people who write, it does seem to me that, you know, it is sometimes... The temptations are there for them to be distracted. I mean, it's easier for them to sort of, like, put the kettle on, get a donut, watch a bit of, you know, deal or no deal. Those kind of things are there yeah. around you all the time. How do you stay focused? Uh, well, if you're writing with someone else, it's a bit easier. But if, you're, if I'm at home, it's absolutely hopeless, useless, you know. I mean, I, I've got the dogs come in and start licking me and, you know, you go <laughs> all that sort of stuff and then before you know it, you're in a, doing something else altogether. And, Couldn't you? <laughs> Just think, if Shakespeare hadn't had a chihuahua, there'd be so many more plays oh, in the yeah, world. Oh, exactly. <laughs> um, and you have the kids, of course. Now, do they come in and bother you, or do they leave Daddy alone when he's working? Well, they, uh, no, they, they, they know to leave me to, to, my, to my scribbling. Do they want to spend time with you, though? Are they Not at the really, age no. now? No. No, no, no. <laughs> How old are your kids now? They care less. Um, I've got two boys who are nine, and uh, my daughters are 14 and 15. Wow, yeah. so a couple of teenage young women so, now. Yes, exactly. So they're, uh, yeah. And so what's your relationship like with them now? Is it, is it still one of, uh, you know, just unbridled love and joy in each other's company, or has it got to the stage where they find you a little bit of an annoyance? What's, yeah. what's the... Uh... I mean, you know, lovely relationship. I'm very, you know, close to them. I've sent them all off to boarding school, so I've never <laughs> seen them. <laughs> there are moments, I'm sure, when you're tempted. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, it's, it's it, you know, it, it, we, we just, uh, we'd have a lot of time and uh, together, but I'm just driving them all over the place. That's what I do. I mean, it's pathetic. I'm just attacked. You're probably a taxi driver as well. Do you do this at the weekend? You drive them off to, you know, sports at the weekend and they wait around. Oh, so you mean like the home service? You they just get drive them back out. in the car and, you know, I, the other day we got, they got in the car, I actually rang my wife and said, POB. So that's how sad it's got. <laughs> and, uh, literally, I'm just always I'm sitting in the car reading the papers, waiting for them to come out of whatever they're doing. Uh. <laughs> 
I get the feeling you kind of bring this on yourself. <laughs> well, I do. I mean, I don't mind. I, I, I don't mind because at least I get some time on my own. In the you get car. some time with them. <laughs> I thought you were going to say some time with the children. No, 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 no. That's that's the whole point. You drop them off and you got time on your own. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to show a clip uh, from Lead Balloon. If you like Jack D, you'll love it. Even if you don't, I'm sure you'll find it bearable. But you know what I like about the character and the way you write him is that uh, often he seems to be in situations which I found myself in, and, and he is voicing the way I sometimes feel yeah, about it's those all, things. it's all uh, the, little, the little situations in life that interest me for comedy. That's what I like. So to... comparatively easy to write them, because these things are happening to you or you're, or you're experiencing Oh, them. yeah, all the time, you know. I mean, they're just, they're, uh, it's just constant. Uh, it may, it's, it's no real secret in that. If, if, if there's a scene, uh, you know, of me at a, a dry cleaners or in a newsagent, then the chances are it's actually happened, and that's why it's there. But you're not yourself, you're not actually a grumpy person, are you? I mean, you kind of play off that on stage and on, on TV, but you're not inherently grumpy, bad-tempered. I, I don't think I am, no. I think I'm actually a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty happy-go-lucky type guy. Is it because, is it because your mouth looks downwards? You yeah, look grumpy. It was, it was, it was, you've got a face for bad news. That's what it yeah, is. It's you, a genetic. You look of... like you've been dropped on your when you were a baby. Were you a forceps delivery? Can I ask you that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was the other way around, that's why. <laughs> Breach, I think they yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let me ask you about the modern world, Jack. Yes, do, yeah. Because one might think that you would be someone who embraced the past because you were kind of, you know, a little grumpy on screen and so on and so forth. But do you like the modern world? Are you a gimmick person? Do you like, uh, do you have a Blackberry? Do you have an iPhone? Well, like, you... I, 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 like a lot of people, I just, I get this stuff, but I hate using it really. I can't, I, oh, I can't. But I you, can't. Why, you get it. You mean you're giving it or you buy it? Oh, bloody hell. Yes, the, uh, the Blackberry and all that. You know, I just, it, I find it very difficult to use. No, that's why they wouldn't let me be Bond because I was never any good with the gadgets. Yeah, so, that... you know. <laughs> that was easy. I, how does this work? You know, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Do you are you on the on MySpace? Do you have a MySpace page or a Facebook page? No. <laughs> no, of course. You don't want to interact with other people. That's, oh no, it's sick. It's like this. I have a Facebook page. You don't have a Facebook page? No. Why do you know you what should you, get a Facebook? Why? Why, why would it? Because do then, that? if you had a Facebook page. Uh, I could add you as a friend on my Facebook page and we could be friends in cyberspace and play Scrabble against each other but without actually ever having to get together. <laughs> Would you not like to play well, Scrabulous? No, I wouldn't, no. I, I, I think friends should get together and, and talk and, and, and interact that way. I think that's... Get with it, Grandad. Bizarre. <laughs> It's bizarre, I, 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 but the time it takes to do all that stuff. Not most people. How many of these cyber friends you got? About 8,000. <laughs> that's just, they're just, they're, that's a fan base, isn't it? Isn't that, you know, the club? <laughs> mm. <laughs> people like that. Uh, OK, we have with us not just one of the finest young comedians in the country. We have Russell Wendell and Daniel Craig. Now, Daniel, of course, a fine actor, but he's the new Bond. You mentioned Bond earlier on. You couldn't be Bond. Would you like to be a Bond villain? I, yeah, I would. I, I, to be a Bond villain, that would be a lot of fun. I think you'd yeah. make a good Bond villain. Would. Yeah. I, I have the Bond villain you could be. Thunderface. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's the man with the golden pun. You see? Oh, no. I see what you did there. Yeah. I, could, I would enjoy being I, a Bond uh, I auditioned to be a Bond villain, but I, I didn't get it because they said, what would you do with a part? And I said, to be honest, I've watched all the Bond movies and I know, I know what the Bond villain's doing wrong. And they said, what? Well, you've just got to shoot him straight away. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always, oh, Bond, come in, we've been expecting you. None of that. What were you doing then? <laughs> what were you doing then? Stroking it away. Oh, you won. <laughs> you won that. Oh, uh, yeah, well, filthy little lead balloon. <laughs> we've been expecting you. Yeah, no, well, you we've been expecting you, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Straight Some in sort there. of gay Bond movie you'd be watching. <laughs> no, but it would be too... It'd be... Yeah. I, think, I think we'd make a good couple. <laughs> we've obviously, we've, you know, that's not actual size. We've made Jack a bit bigger than he actually is. But... <laughs> OK, Jack. Uh, I heard a story, I don't know if this is true, uh, that while you were filming, that, that you were in a part of London where there was some kind of gang violence going on nearby and... And yep. there, was, there was an actual well, when incident? We, when we were filming Le Balloon, we had the house was blacked out. It's a real house in a real street. And uh, uh, the house was blacked out because we were doing a night scene, so a big, no one could see out into the street. Halfway through the, a scene, and we heard um, what I thought was like, sounded like a, a, a car backfiring, just you know, only three times in, in quick succession. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bang, bang, bang. 
and um, I thought it'd be funny just to sort of fall over and make out that I'd be... So that was kind of an ad lib, kind yeah, of a physical ad lib. Yeah. Just to make people laugh and get 250 quid when they send it off to you being framed. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, when, we'd, uh, when we finished the scene, we, uh, we went outside into the street and the place was swarming with plainclothes policemen and uh, armed police. And there had been a real shooting incident like out in the street. by shooting. And the police, we were then witnesses because we'd filmed it and we had the gunshot on sound. So you hadn't actually filmed what was going on, but you, filmed you, you it, but we had the it with, a, with a time code, so it had exactly the time. Well, I think we have this clip. We actually oh, right. have the clip mm. of... Uh, the, I haven't seen this yet. It's of you filming it, and, and then these noises you hear are an actual... It's an actual shooting. This is the real... But so, was someone hurt, do you know? No, or? they weren't. They weren't. Okay. Like, with a, someone was shot in the shoulder, so... Oh, well, that's nothing. Yes, they were hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could all have a laugh at that now, in good exactly. conscience. <laughs> <laughs> no one was killed. No. A bloke was just a little bit frightened. OK. This is uh, the actual... Uh, this is an outtake this from you outtake shooting Lev Balloon. Uh, yeah, and someone's shooting someone else. Okay, hold it there. Sorry. And action. Shooting outside. It was an actual shooting so when did you, outside. So you looked outside after that and then when you saw the police? When we went out at the end of the scene, all these detectives came on set and demanded that uh, they need to have the film as, as, their, as, as, as evidence. So they, take, they took it off down the, down the station, came back, and then I had to give an interview and they said, so to get this straight, were you or were you not hurt when the gone... Where... <laughs> no, I was joking, I heard and I fell over. <laughs> Sorry, so why did you fall over? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, they're just not fans of your sort of comedy, to, that's yeah, all that is. I was going to be witness in court at one point, can you imagine? <laughs> to prove you were still alive? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what happened to the fellow with the, uh, the hole in his arm? Would you know what happened to him? Did they oh, he's fine, sleep? don't worry about that. <laughs> this, this, this is about me. <laughs> Um, Jack, how lovely to have you back on the show. Good uh, continued success with Led Balloon. I've been enjoying much. it very much. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of this series. Yeah. I hope there will be a third. Well, I'm sure there will. Of course, the first series, if you missed it, is, is available on, on DVD. Oh, Christ, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> well, you know... I'm here. That's why I came here. That's why I came on the show. I, I, I've, got, I was... I've got a suitcase of them out the back. No-one's buying them. <laughs> to see a once great comedian, Foster. Oh, no. Floggy, shoddy <laughs> mares. <laughs> like a whore. <laughs> There's a whole back catalogue of stuff as well. Let's do this nicely mm. so we can put this in view. Uh, I didn't get to see all the first series. Uh, any plans on bringing it out in DVD form? Uh, <laughs> actually, since you mentioned it, yeah, there is a... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Jack D. Led Balloon is out on DVD, and I recommend it highly because it's a very funny series. And I'm looking forward to number two, Mr. Jack D. Ladies and gentlemen, that was great. We made something Jack D. That's that's one of the funniest men in the country. Right there.